Hello and welcome to the Vegan Corner. Here is another recipe for a famous sauce known as Thai sweet chili sauce. This recipe is extraordinary as it perfectly blends together the spiciness of the chili with the sweetness of sugar, but also delivers some delicious sharp notes coming from the vinegar. However, I think I should stop talking about these, as I don't want to take away all the fun of making this recipe. So let's move on and see how to make this marvelous sauce. The ingredient list is in the description down below the video. To begin with, let's start by chopping some perfectly ripe red chili. If you want your sauce to be hot, don't remove the internal white membranes, but if you are like me and don't really enjoy having to drink directly from a fire extinguisher, you can use only the external part of the fruit to get a lighter sauce. Now, finally chop some ginger. The last ingredient to prepare is garlic, which should obviously be chopped as finely as possible. And the hard part of the recipe is just finished. How was it? Easy, right? Now add all the ingredients into a saucepan and turn on the heat onto medium. Bring the liquid to a boil and wait. You might ask, wait for what? Well, basically now we have to wait for all the water to evaporate so that the sauce concentrates enough to become of its traditional consistency. For this reason, there is really no specific cooking time here, and I'm afraid you'll have to watch the sauce during the entire process. Generally, however, the cooking time with this quantity of ingredients is about 15 minutes, and we like to think that it's more interesting than watching paint dry due to the exciting prospect of Thai chili sauce at the end of it. You don't get that when you redecorate. But how do you know when to stop the cooking process? There are two solutions here. The first is for control freaks like me, which is to bring the sauce to exactly 106 degrees Celsius, which is about 225 degrees Fahrenheit. And the other solution is to wait for the bubbles of the sauce to change in consistency and look. It might seem strange, but investing in a $10 pan thermometer can really make the difference in the kitchen, as it would allow you to cook almost any ingredient perfectly at every single attempt. As you can see here, these are no longer the bubbles that you were seeing at the beginning of the cooking process, as by now almost all the water is evaporated and you are left with a sort of chili flavored syrup. Here you can see the bubbles at the end of the cooking process, which basically are not really bubbles anymore, as they resemble a sort of foam. For the sake of giving you a proper explanation, here you can see a comparison of the two. On the left, the bubbles from the beginning of the cooking process, and on the right, the bubbles telling you to turn off the heat, quickly. Does this make sense? I hope so, as unfortunately there is no other way for you to know when is the time to end the cooking process. However, trust me on this, it's pretty straightforward. Also remember that the sauce hardens when it cools down, so don't be tempted by cooking it more to thicken it, or you will end up with sweet chili caramel sauce. And although we really want to make a recipe for caramel sauce, we are not quite sure today's the day. And here you have the final Thai sweet chili sauce. Be honest with us, how does it look? Aren't you looking forward to dip something into it? Grilled vegetables are a great option, but your index finger would be equally effective, and I say that from years of experience. We seriously hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial, and if you'd like to see us proposing more dips and sauces to go with your favorite foods, please give this video a thumbs up and we'll make sure to accommodate your wish. Many thanks and to the next recipe!